<laughs> we're trying to keep these two, Darren, away from each other. The 89 Stanley Cup winning goal, and then four years later, game one, Stanley Cup conference final. Toronto Maple Leafs facing off against your Los Angeles Kings. Doug Gilmore going down the right side, cuts to the middle, and meets Marty McSorley's elbow, and then a Wendell Clark fight ensues. We talked to Wendell on the uh, trade deadline day, Marty. Walk us through this now as you sit across from Doug Gilmore so many late years later. Well, but, I mean, Doug was such a great competitor, and he had an unbelievable year. I mean, he was in the top two, three guys in the whole league the whole year, and we did not play well that whole game. We had a lot of young guys who were really intimidated. There's so much media. And I just wanted to kick the hornet's nest open. I wanted to say, listen, we're here. This is going to be a long, hard-fought series. And the best way to do it, Doug Gilmore happened to be on the ice with a minute and a half left. The score was, I think, 4-1 at the time. You give Doug a shot, let everybody focus on you. We're not going quietly. And uh, it happened. I mean, our, our whole team kind of, everything focused on Doug and I and then Wendell's fight and left the rest of our team alone. And I think it helped us as a hockey club. You want to go back to that moment? Rule one, when you look at the lineup starting the game, you make sure you don't cut across a, the ice against a guy like that. <laughs> <laughs> so it happened to me a couple times over and over again. But, uh, uh, again, that's playoffs, and that's what happens. And, and again, what a great series it was. You know, I, I, and I know at that point, hitting Doug, I'm not chasing him out of a series. He, he's too much of a competitor. We played against him for too many years to know you're not chasing him out. You just know it's going to be a long, hard fought series. There's no way you're chasing him no. out. No, and we knew. I knew that. But you got to rattle the cage, and you got to. I had to That's have the mentality. Tactic, they have the to come through. Come yeah. through me yeah. for, for them to win. Okay, so you rattle the cage in game one. You got back at him in game five. Uh, not with your elbow. Not with your fist. Not with your stick. But with your helmet. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot what happened there if I stepped on something <laughs> on the ice. But I, uh, I was very close to Marty, and a um, little headbutt happened. Um, next game is in, uh, obviously, L.A., and uh, I see every fan in the stands. Gilmore headbutt. Turn it around. Gilmore butthead. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was, you know, and obviously in those days, I, the fans really got into it, obviously, Marty, in L.A., and, and uh, it was great to see. And, uh, you know, those guys played there. And listen, Guys that you love to hate. Well, you, you do, and you'd yeah. love to have them on your team as well. well that's that's yeah. my but point. He, he, yeah. may, he may be better, too, because, you know, at some games you might be sleeping a little bit. Yeah. He's coming around, and he maybe wake you up yeah. get you back <laughs> into the game. And, and as we know, guys, I mean, playoff hockey can get nasty. When you won the Stanley Cup with the Flames in 1989, 12 unsportsmanlike penalties in that final series alone, almost close to a record. What's the nastiest thing you've ever done in the playoffs, Denny? I don't know how long we have. You want to just isolate one? Well, I, there is. <laughs> yeah. there, there, <laughs> I like to think that they were necessary. The other <laughs> N-word, right? Yeah. Not nasty. We were playing against the Quebec Nordiques, and at that time you had this Dastny Brothers, and they were pretty hot that year. And, of course, we wanted to establish ourselves early. So the very first shift of the game, Stastny gets the puck, and he's coming through the neutral zone, and he tries to make a move, and I get him with a really good hip check. And I still feel that... That kind of a hit was a, t a hit that determined how the game was going to be played. Of course, the rest of the team followed, and we beat them in four. You swept them. And now, yeah. what's the nastiest thing you've ever seen? Against Marty's team, and again, the, with the Edmonton Oilers and Philadelphia Flyers, when Ron Hextall tried to cut Captain Nielsen oh, in yeah. half with the stick swinging incident, it was unbelievable. I think Glenn Anderson came in early, but poor oh, Kenta, oh my he didn't goodness. know what he didn't oh. know what was going on. Oh, he took a dive. Oh, no. <laughs> and Mike, and then they suspend him for three games the next season. No, 20, 20 games. Oh, yeah. 20 so, games you know, the next season. We, you know, we were on our bench, and we saw Hexy uh, was rattled because Glenn Anderson rattled him. In, and Hexy's looking for something. Kent Nielsen was just foolish enough to skate around close enough to him. And when Hexy hacked, Glenn Sather walked up and down the bench and said, nobody do anything. They Great tactic we, again because Hex is, you know, won the con Smythe and a losing cause. But so we didn't want to make it into a scrum our best series against you guys. Mm -hmm. You know, we wanted we wanted to try to keep the flow. And Glenn Sather looks at me and goes, you hear me. Don't do anything. Leave it alone. <laughs> yeah, so. Sleeping dogs, sleeping dogs. Darren, uh, I'll tell you what, it can get nasty, but nice to bring the two sides together again. What stays on, What goes on on the ice stays on the ice. We just bring it up again here in the strategy room about 14 years later.